UFC 300 is coming up this weekend, and today, guys, I have the complete betting guide for you. If you usually watch a channel, I suggest watching this little piece of the intro here, but if you want to skip to any part of the video, timestamps will be there if you'd like to skip to any particular part. This betting guide, unfortunately, guys, has to be cut short. Usually, we go through prop bets that I like, usually potential parlays, but... I'm literally making this video last minute because we just got word from our OB appointment that our baby is due tonight or tomorrow, so I need to pump out these videos, and this one is being scheduled way before you see it because I really want to get this UFC 300 betting guide video out, so I'm going to dive into the bets as quickly as I can. I have a full card breakdown video if you were interested in seeing it there, but again, if you'd like to skip to any part, guys, timestamps will be there if you'd like to skip to any particular part. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with many YouTube channels. Let's start this video off with the confident picks. And, okay, the first confident pick I have for you guys. And you go, you'll you have to bear with me on this one because I can talk about the fighters themselves. This one in particular is a little bit of a gut feeling to me. I don't know why. I just have a very, very strong feeling that Alexander Rakic is going to be the one to get this job done. I don't know why. I really, really worry about Yuri coming back. I really worry about the big, imposing figure that Alexander Rakic is. He's just, he's been so good and so underrated for so long. And I honestly worry. I know Yuri's 31. I know, but he took so much damage in his last few fights. He didn't look impressive in his last bout. He went out in his last bout. I really, really want Yuri Prohoshka to win, but I just have a funny feeling about Alexander Rakic for this one, guys. I just, I'm feeling good about him. And it is also important to note that like I said in the intro, I have a full card breakdown video diving as deep into these fights as I could possibly go. This video is just kind of summing all of that up for you for this video. But let's talk about another confident pick on the card, and that is going to be Weili Zhang. Guys, Weili Zhang, in my opinion, is going to dominate this fight. The only chance that Yan Nan has is to clip Weili Zhang, and you know what? It's possible, but Weili's the better fighter. In my opinion, Weili Zhang is the greatest female MMA fighter of all time. She's going to come in, use her wrestling. She could probably even beat her in the striking department. I wholeheartedly believe she is going to do whatever she wants to to Yan Nan, and I almost, almost had her at lock of the week. So I'm feeling very, very good about Whaley in this fight. But I do have one more confident pick for you on this card. And guys, it's going to be Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill is kind of set up right now to for Alex Pereira to win this fight. First of all, Jamal Hill coming off an Achilles injury. With everything that Jamal Hill has been talking about before UFC 300, it seems like this is too early for him to come back. Now, do we know that for sure? Of course not. Jamal Hill's talking about himself being ready. He showed up, and he looked, even in his last performance, man, he looked a little bit overweight. We saw that he has been gaining weight on his time off, too. So with that injury that he had, how much has he been training? How motivated is he? I'm sure he's motivated, but, like, I really, really worry about the commitment to the training, and if that recovery it had a little bit of a hiccup, and maybe he's coming back too soon. I don't know. There's too many questions there. And on top of that, I just like the style of Alex Pereira for Jamal Hill. I really do. You see Jamal Hill with his hands down a lot while he's throwing shots. Alex Pereira is having him open for a left hook. Even if you want to talk about the Achilles injury, Alex has some very, very dangerous light kicks. He looks strong. He looks powerful at this, at this weight class. I'm not counting out Jamal Hill like the rest of the MMA community seems to be, but I am fairly confident that Alex Pereira will win this fight. But guys, I have a couple underdog opportunities I would like to talk about for this card in particular. And the first underdog opportunity I want to talk about is going to be Jim Miller. Guys, these aren't necessarily picks of mine to win the fight, but I, if you're looking for underdog money, these are the fights that I like. Jim Miller, at the time of recording this video, is sitting at a plus 250 underdog. I think that's crazy. Jim Miller, even in his last fight, only had one hiccup against Alexander Hernandez. And sometimes, every once in a while, Alexander Hernandez shows up and decides to look like a world champion. Super weird. That was just one of those nights. I mean, it wasn't a perfect performance, but you get the point. The guy's so inconsistent. He can beat anybody. He has the Michael Johnson effect. But Jim Miller has been having the Glover to share effect, getting better and better with age. He's, he's got knockout power. He's finishing fights. Bobby Green is very, very old as well at 37 in the fight game, and I'm very, very hesitant all the time on picking fighters that are 40 years old, but Jim Miller seems to be turning back the clock. Bobby Green coming off of a horrible, horrible KO just three months ago. Jim Miller can absolutely chin him. I am picking Jim Miller to win this fight. I think he's just better in general besides maybe pure boxing. I love Jim Miller in this matchup, and I'm strongly considering placing a bet. And by the way, guys, 
If you are interested, check out the channel membership. You can see my official plays every single weekend for each card. It's fantastic. And I don't know how last weekend went because, of course, I'm rushing to get this video out. But I'm very, very confident. Typically, we are very, very nicely in the positive. So if you're interested in seeing my official bets, my official plays, check out the channel membership. Anyways, let's get back into one more underdog opportunity for you guys. And that is going to be Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira is beating down it again, and at the time of recording this video, he is sitting at a plus 275 underdog. I think that's crazy. Charles Oliveira is... People before his loss to Islam Makachev have been talking about him as the guy to beat Habib Nurmagomedov. Now, what's interesting is he seems to be next in line to dethrone or just to knock down another top prospect at lightweight. Like, Gaethje did it to, <laughs> Gaethje did it to Vaziv, Dustin Poirier just did it to Benoit Saint-Denis. And now a lot of people are following the train and saying that Charles Oliveira is going to do the same to Armin Sarukian. Now, if you've seen any pictures of Armin Sarukian, this dude is the best in shape that he's ever been. A lot of people are accusing him of being on something. I'm not saying that myself, but I believe Armin Sarukian can absolutely win this fight. I think he is much better than both Vaziv and Benoit Saint-Denis. Charles Oliveira is something you have to worry about as he's 34 years old, but... I don't know why everybody's counting out Charles Oliveira. I think this should be closer to a pick em fight, in my opinion. So the value is absolutely 100% on Charles Oliveira for this fight. And I like him, man. I've been bouncing around who I'm picking for this fight, but I'm honestly strongly considering placing a bet just because it's Charles Oliveira. Now, guys, I have a few fights that, in my opinion, you should be avoiding. Fights that you should not be touching, and I will tell you why. I'll go through them very, very briefly. And the first fight that I don't believe you should be betting on is Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Simply put, you don't know what version of Jessica Andrade is going to show up. You don't. <laughs> is she showing up for a check, or is she going to show up and try to get a knockout? Who knows? I don't know. I'm staying away from this one. Now, here's a very, very interesting one, okay? An interesting pick. The fight that I do not believe you should be betting on is Sadiq Youssef versus Diego Lopez. Guys, I am also, like the rest of the MMA community on the Diego Lopez hype train. And at the time of recording this video, I do not see any odds for it, so maybe they didn't drop yet, which is surprising, at least for Betway over here. I should be taking a look at Odds Jam, but again, I was scrambling scrambling to make this video. Anyways, I don't know what the odds are off the top of my head, but guys, I'm on the Diego Lopez train too. I think he's great, and I think he's going to go far in the division, and I think he is very, very good, okay? People forget how good Sadiq Youssef is. This dude is a fantastic fighter, and he has all the tools in the box to be able to beat Diego Lopez. He is being severely underrated. Again, I don't know what the odds are. Like, hardcore betters, and the odds might suggest that this is a close fight, but I've seen so many people in this MMA community talking about Diego Lopez running through Sadiq Youssef. I'd be surprised if that happened. I wouldn't be surprised if he won the fight, but I'd be surprised if that happened because Sadiq Youssef is fantastic. Keep that in mind, okay? I'm not betting on this one myself. All right. Hear me out for this next one, okay? Hear me out. Hear me out. Do not bet Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. I know the lines have been moving like crazy. At the time of recording this video, Bo Nickel is a minus 700 favorite. I'm done betting on Cody Brundage, or excuse me, betting against Cody Brundage for the rest of time. I'm never doing it again. I have gotten burnt these past two fights with him, or the past, excuse me, past three fights. Cedricus Dumas, Jacob Malkoon, Zach Reese, all of these I bet on, and all of these I've lost. Cody Brundage has that effect to absolutely murder parlays. I don't care if Bo Nickel's overhyped. I don't care anything about Bo Nickel in this fight. That's not why I'm saying to avoid this. It's Cody Brundage. I am keeping my money far away from this dude until the end of time. Never again will I bet on Cody Brundage. He can screw everything up if you have a very long parlay. He's the guy to screw it up, man. He is the guy to screw it up. But I have one more fight that I believe you guys should not be betting on, and that is Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. If you want to talk about props, I do like round props for this, but just for money line, just for picking the fight, I don't know who's going to win this fight, man. I don't know. I've been leaning towards Holloway as time goes on. Holloway's been looking big. Holloway's been looking good. But we don't know how the power is going to affect Max Holloway. We don't know how the volume is going to affect Justin Gaethje. This is a close and fantastic fight. That is pretty much the end of it, and I think you're crazy if you're confident in either one of these guys to win. I think you're nuts. <laughs> That's the gist of it. I don't believe you should be betting on this fight. I do like, I will say though, I love the round props for this, so I can't wait to see what that ends up being. Now guys, I do want to talk about lock of the week, the fighter on the card that I believe has the closest to 100% chance of winning on this card 
and it's Davison Figueredo. Davison Figueredo, I believe, even at 36 years old for the Bantamweight division, is going to chin Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt has a chin issue. Cody Garbrandt has a slugging with people issue. And Davison Figueredo is the guy to crack your chin and not the guy you want to slug with. It's that simple, in my opinion. Cody Garbrandt might have a little bit faster hands, but over the course of three rounds, Figueredo's going to chin him, in my opinion, and Cody Garbrandt's going to go down. I'm shocked that Cody Garbrandt is on a two-fight win streak, and I understand that it's to <laughs> a little bit lower level competition here, but Davison Figueredo still has it at 36 years old. I know, I know I wouldn't pick him against a lot of people at Bantamweight right now, but against Cody Garbrandt, I think it's just a bad matchup. It's a really bad matchup. I like Davison Figueredo a lot, but guys, apologies that I had to cut this video short. It's unfortunate that's for UFC 300. I really appreciate you being here. If you're interested in checking out my official plays, bets, you can see them. Just join the channel membership. I will be uploading that later on throughout the week for you guys if you are interested in seeing that. Also, check out the opportunity we have over at Odds Gem. You can get a discount by using code CLENBAT and the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Take care.